Across the top of the dashboard, there are different tabs. What these tabs consist of are the different elements of the qualification. So it'll have the MVQ on there. It will have the functional skills on there as well. And there's a different tab for each of those. What we're going to do now is we're just going to have a look at one of the tabs. The information that is displayed on this tab is the same information regardless of which element of the portfolio you go into. The only thing that will change is the progress. So the first icon is the progress tab and this lets Danny know how much evidence he has towards this element of his qualification. Whereas if we flick over onto the functional skills, if they finish this, the orange bar could be at 100%. Whereas on their main element, the orange bar could be less. So in this example, on functional skills, they've got 64% evidence, but on their MVQ, they've got 61% of the evidence. So this progress bar is just relevant to this element of the qualification. Next, we have the upload work icon, and this is where the learner would click through to upload their work. So if we just click through onto this now, this allows the, um, the apprentice the option to upload a file. Alternatively, they can upload a link using a URL. So if they've got their evidence saved onto a different website, for an example, a company's e-learning system, you could, they can copy and paste the link for that into this browse section there. So if I click on the link, it then allows you to copy and paste the link into there. There's also an option if a, a learner's got a paper hard copy of some evidence, they can just put on there that there's a paper hard copy and in the box here, they would just need to detail where the evidence can be found. So for an example, if an apprentice has had an appraisal and the company have the appraisal documented on paper and it's stored within the company, you would just need to document the location where that development plan can be found. Once they've selected the type of evidence that they wish to upload, they then just need to click on add and then that will advise the apprentice that the evidence has been saved. I'll just give an example of this. So I'm just going to upload a file. So they click on open and then upload. And then you just need to click on continue. What the apprentice must do on this next screen is they must tick this declaration. Now, if they forget to tick this declaration, once they click save at the end, it will prompt them that they need to go into this and tick to confirm that their work is their own work. Um, the apprentice can also put in a description of what the evidence is, and then they can also put in their comments as well. You would then need the apprentice to click in the learner signature box so that it is signed by them and then click on save. And then all new evidence always goes to the top of the evidence folder and it's always highlighted in red. Once this has been assessed and referenced into the units, then the evidence will go to a black type rather than the red to let you know that that has been assessed. We just go back to the portfolio by clicking the tab at the top. The next icon is the units and this allows the apprentice to see at a glance what units they're actually doing. And this is traffic light system. So if a unit is in amber, although it looks like olive green on here, that means that there's evidence gathered for that unit. The red dot indicates that there's no work in that unit. And if there's a dark green circle, then that indicates that the unit's been signed off. So that's useful for the apprentice just to see at a glance what they have left to work towards. The next icon is the learning plan. And the learning plan is the same as what the assessor has access to. So if an apprentice wants to know what their feedback is from their last visit, if they just click through to the learning plan, then they would just need to expand the session and then they would be able to gain the access to the feedback there. If they couldn't remember what their appointment was going to be regarding, again, they can have a look at the planning notes and they can see access from their um, information regarding what's going to be conducted on the visit. If we just go back to the portfolio, 
If you have resources for the qualification and the learner needs some access to these resources, in the orange box on the second line, this is where they will locate the resources. So if we click through to this, that gives the apprentice a list of the resources that are available there. And it also tells them the status, whether they've looked at it or not. And um, once the apprentice opens that, it will change that to that it has been opened and completed and the date that it was completed. It also allows the learner to give some feedback on how they found that resource. So going back to the portfolio. The next box is files from course. If you've got any workbooks or any training materials that the apprentice might require for this, they can click through there and they'll get access to the workbooks from the files from course. In the red icon, this allows the apprentice to create a CV. So if you click through to this link, Smart Assessor will automatically generate the learner's name and the company that they are currently working for. It will then ask the learner to type in their position within the company and then detail their personal profile, their achievements and the career history. Also ask them to put in their education, the qualifications, any training, any interests. As they input this information, if they click submit, um, once they've inputted all that information, then Smart Assessor will generate a CV for them. Just going back to the portfolio, the last icon on the screen is the green box which is the progress map. If the learner clicks through on this it allows them to see all their outstanding criteria so it's like a gap analysis so they can see what areas they have left to work on. This can be exported to a PDF. Once the PDF is ready if you just click on open so anything that is red means that the learner still has that to work on. Anything in yellow identifies that there is evidence attached to that criteria. Any green boxes shows that that criteria has been signed off as complete. Just closing that, it now takes us back to the learner's dashboard. And again, at the bottom, it just advises the apprentice of when their next appointment is, who the assessor is, and the time of the appointment. If the learner would like to book any training, they have access to the training on Smart Assessor and they can click through to this for the training. If they wish for some further support, they can contact Smart Assessor through this link here. And if they would like to suggest any changes that they would like to see made to their dashboard, then they can click on this link here and Smart Assessor will look at those um, suggestions and take those on board as I have done in the past, which is how this dashboard was created. If we click on to the functional skills, Again, you can see that all those icons are exactly the same and all the information that was on the previous screen is the same. The only thing that's changed is the progress because the progress is relevant to the functional skills in maths this time.